Hey guys and welcome to Words of Scale. So I finally got in my hands on the GPTs and um, I have mixed feelings guys. So personally I think that for my use cases and uh, be mindful of that I'm not a programmer so I cannot benefit from the ability to connect APIs as of now but for my use cases I am dying to see the plugins be part of the GPTs because for now GPTs can handle browse, dolly, and uh, code interpreter and they cannot use plugins and that's a shame because a lot of my standard operational procedures SOPs have to do with the parsing YouTube and using web pilots and other plugins so it's a shame but I've been playing around with the GPTs and I've built three that I will show you and I think I will share the links to them in the end of this video. Before I proceed I think that the best quality wise the best GPTs are going to be based on the data not just pure automation by data so this is the concept of a block title GPT and I have uh, a lot of information. <laughs> oh, actually, there should have been number two. Number two. <laughs> um, I've fed a lot of information to this GBD about the, what constitutes a perfect block title. What are some of the golden standards like using columns and parentheses and using odd numbers and whatnot. And this is still work in progress, but still, I think one of the best GPTs are going to be based on your custom data. And we'll just upload this so I don't lose this file. And before I show you the three GPTs that I've developed, uh, let me just step back. To use this, you need to basically to see this interface once you log in. So the chat GPT is now looking different. And there, there have been a lot of YouTubers covering this uh, design side of things, so I won't be touching that. All you need to know that you now have the GBD, which is a single window, one entry window for all browse, dolly, and code interpreter. And then you have the explore tab from which you can either use the GBDs developed by OpenAI or you can create your own. And I've come up with the three GBDs, three separate use cases. To create a GBD, you just press on the plus sign. Then you can basically chat with ChatGPT about making your GPT. <laughs> um, that's a tongue twister, but I prefer just go into configure. You can name your um, GPT so it stands out, then a short description so everybody understands what it does. And then basically acts as custom instructions. And you can use conversation starters, so you can use some beginner prompts to start off the process. And then you can e either activate or deactivate uh, on three of these features, which are again web browsing, Dolly, and Code Interpreter. And if you are code savvy, which I'm not, you can use other APIs here. So without further ado, the three GBDs that I came up with are as follows. So the first one is the content gap one. Basically this uh, GBD analyzes the article and finds content gaps. We just paste in the target URL like so. And then you need to choose one. Um, more often than not, it's going to be your own article. So let's just use our canonical example, which is safe for docs and can doc, can docs it longer. You enter it here like so. And then basically it's going to assess and evaluate your content, not necessarily based on the SEO, but based on the content and how good your content is. Because SEO is simple. You need a certain keyword density, you need uh, your keywords to be mentioned in certain places, you need backlinks, you need this and that. But as far as the content goes, it's much more subjective. So this is an objective way of evaluating your content. So the article can docs eat longin from say for doc covers various aspects of feeding longin to docs. It provides general information. The article also discusses the health benefits of longin for docs. It addresses concerns such as potential allergies to longer in docs. Here are a few areas that could be expanded upon or included. And this is where the rubber meets the road. So this is very important. Number one, nutritional breakdown. A detailed breakdown of the nutritional content of longer, including vitamins, minerals, and calorie count, could provide more comprehensive information for dog owners. And I don't have that. In the, let's just double check. It's good practice to double check uh, ChatGPT. So ChatGPT or the content gap GPT is, is saying that I don't have 
anything about the and I actually I, I truly think that this article ranks purely because of my YouTube channel because the content is extremely thin yeah and nothing here talks about the nutritional value okay comparison with with similar fruits comparing long to similar fruits uh, dogs might eat like lychee or grapes could help owners understand the relative risks again I'm not comparing long to any other fruits case studies or uh, veterinary opinions including expert opinions or case studies this is a great uh, this is great for EEAT alternative treat options providing a list of the alternative safe fruits or treats for dogs especially those uh, with similar nutritional profiles to long and could, uh, could be helpful science of our consumption long-term effects these additions would be would enhance the article's comprehensiveness offering readers a more well-rounded understanding of feeding long into dogs and this is 100 percent on point so i've been uh, playing with this prompt um, it's not a complex prompt but i think it does what i want it to do it looks at the content not from the seo standpoint but from the human eye standpoint from the helpful content standpoint and it just tells me straight up what i'm missing and i think this is a great addition again this is called content gap whatever explorer by words to scale and i will make it public Okay, so the second uh, GPD is an LSI extractor. So again, it acts very similarly to the previous one in that you need to enter the seed keyword or the URL. So this GPD extracts LSI keywords and entities from the top ranking pages. So I'll press this to prep the GPD. So it will ask me to enter the seed keywords. So the seed keyword is can doxy longan once again. And somebody joked in the comment section that I when EEAT slash expert on long ends on the whole internet and I wish I wish I was and maybe we can brainstorm together of the ways to monetize long ends and now what's uh, happening uh, in, in the background is that uh, Bing is searching for the top three ranking pages and I've been playing around with the numbers uh, and whenever I ask it to do five or ten pages it just freezes up and it says it's timed out so I've had the most uh, success with uh, just the top three and be mindful of that so this is top three in Bing not in Google but I'm pretty sure that as far as LSI and entities they are all going to be similar based on the analysis of the three top ranking articles on the topic of whether dogs can eat longer a range of relevant LSI keywords and entities were identified and here you should be getting 100 uh, LSI keywords and 50 entities and I want to I'll probably again get a lot of hate for this I don't know why uh, people who like NeuroWriter are very emotional that's just weird so once again I'm not bashing NeuroWriter I'm not this is a great tool what I'm saying is that if you are using NeuroWriter for the sole purpose of extracting LSI keywords there are free alternatives that are not worse and sometimes even better so the only verification we'll do is uh, this I'll, uh, I've just extracted all the keywords from NeuroWriter and I'll paste it back to NeuroWriter and I will just uh, leave the basic terms and the extended terms and uh, I have pre-populated title and description for those of you playing at home and uh, I'm not sure if it's gonna affect anything let's just be uh, let's just tidy this up a little bit let's get, get rid of this unnecessary text here and the SEO score is 20 and I know this is not like this is like 10% of the process but I uh, here I'm just checking the validity of the keywords so we have 20 uh, the 20 is the SEO score if we use all the suggested keywords and yeah we got 100 our uh, size and uh, now we are getting to 50 entities and unfortunately we timed out and let's just let's just do this I'm, I'm really curious so we didn't get to the whole list and the SEO score was 20 and I'll just paste in the whatever uh, ChatGPT suggested and the score is 31 so even with the broken up list the SEO score is still higher than the NeuroWriter's native list. Hopefully you can see why I'm not recommending NeuroWriter for the sole purpose of LSI. So this is uh, agent or GPT number two. 
Now to the final one. Uh, so, okay, my favorite by far is the news galore, which is you go to AI for the most viral news and articles, and we'll be picking the topic first. And so once it finishes uh, doing everything, I'll walk you through the logic. Please specify the topic, ChatGPT. So basically what is happening right now is that ChatGPT is using Browse to find the latest news around ChatGPT that are extremely recent. So uh, ideally today, then it's gonna pick three topics and assess their viral potential. And then ChatGB is choosing just the one topic that it thinks has the most potential. So the most recent news about ChatGPT centers on a significant distributed denial of service attack. Here's the outline for the article focusing on the DDoS attack and its implications. And in the background, uh, ChatGPT is actually browsing several sources and then it evaluates each source against their viral potential and picks the one. And this time around, ChatGPT picked the DDoS one. So then ChatGPT or GPT, the news galore GPT goes on to create a featured image, which uh, should represent the DDoS attack. Next, uh, it's creating a helpful visualization. Wow, this is actually great. So this is the how the events went. So the DDoS attack began on the 7th. Then the attack was identified on the 8th and it was got a risk of uh, on the 9th. Nice. Unfortunately, I've been having these uh, network errors and this is to be expected because everybody is using the ChatGPT right now. So I ha have to run this again because it hasn't finished. So once again, it identified the same news. Well, the GDOS, it scored a 9 out of 10. Now it's creating the article. And now it's going to create the featured image visualization. So this one is tricky. I mean, the... Um, bot itself, the GPT, sometimes it will create an image and then the article, sometimes it will create the article and then the image, sometimes the article we will not be sufficient as far as the word count, but uh, you can still do everything that you need. So the important thing that it still includes the sources and that's part of the initial prompt. I wanted to include the sources. So once we are done with the images, we can go back and say, create a de more detailed version of the article. So this is the featured image again, uh, revolving ar around the DDoS. Now a helpful visualization. And then ahead of time, if we don't crash, okay, write me a more detailed version of the above article. 1000 words. I just really want to see what uh, the visualization is going to be. Everything that is happening here is happening with GPT 128K. So we have this enormous context window. So again, network error. So I won't be regenerating, obviously, but you get the gist. So we got a couple of visualizations. So we got an article, which we can then bump up or make better. And I'm having severe network issues right now because again, everybody's trying these GPTs. But there you have it guys. So we have the OSI extractor. So we have the content gap. We have the news galore. I have uh, an outreach GPT that I'm working on. A giant article GPT, a teaser <laughs> of sorts. So if you want more of this video, like, share and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.